So I'm going to start by just updating you. I think some of you will have seen these days from, from Richard and Doug West on the first year of the HQIP led consultant outcomes program or project. It's called a program, in fact. But um, so, so just take update you on this and then explain what the background is, how these things all link together, and how they might serve how we can improve these sort of outcome measures in future. So this came. Um, I understand there was a, a train journey when Bruce Keo and somebody else in the Department of Health sat on a train and thought we needed consultants, we needed individual outcomes, and they made a list on the back of a, it wasn't a, a fag packet, but a, a very brief list of which surgical specialties they were going to target. And they didn't pick lung cancer in the first round. So the first round was the year before this, and up at GI, head and neck, bowel... And I was involved because of the NCIN helped. But anyway, so, and there was a lot of blood on the floor from some of those specialties early on. So, so, th th so the uh, uh, thoracic surgical community came in, in year two, and we had a letter from NHS England, as it then became, which is basically Bruce Keogh, to this thing called the Healthcare Quality Improvement Partnership, which I'll explain a bit more in a minute. But essentially, HQIP, um, on NHS England's behalf, commission all the national clinical audits, not just in, ca in cancer, they commission about 36, 37 clinical audits. And in between NHS England and HQIP, there's a thing called the National Advisory Group on Clinical Audit and Inquiries, which I, I'm on. So there's, anyway, that's where it comes from. And NHS England asked, well not asked, told HQIP to do this in thoracic surgery, in lung cancer. Um, and to, to produce those um, by the autumn of 2014. The National Lung Cancer Audit at that time was housed in the Information Centre in Leeds, the Health and Social Care Information in Leeds, Centre in Leeds, and I'll come back to that a bit later on. So um, we were told to produce outcomes for English thoracic surgeons, and we, had a, a, we were told to produce surgeon-specific 30 and 90-day mortality. And there was a very long meeting in London with Ben Bridgewater um, on Bruce's behalf, and he started out the meeting absolutely adamant, this, we had to do this. By the end of the meeting, he was completely around to the point of view that it was not the appropriate thing to do. And so we stole that, um, and we were particularly worried that the main problem was a, a low resection rate rather than perioperative mortality. That was the main... A clinical issue was a poor resection rate or variable, not, not the perioperative mortality, and they accepted that. So, you know this, so we looked at 2012, basically from the audit, but we compared it with, with the SCTS audit. Overall, 30 to 90 day mortality for, for, for units. Um, the, 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 the names of each surgeon who contributed to the work of that cardiothoracic unit uh, and to the local MDCs, and the number of procedures done by each individual surgeon, but we didn't break it down by different uh, surgical uh, procedures and the overall resection rate, which we did by trying to impute what the catchment area of that centre was. I won't go into the technical side of it, partly because I don't fully understand it, but it has to do with the age-sex distribution of the population that's coming in and where it comes from. You can make a pretty good estimate of what the, the actual virtual catchment population of a major centre is. It's not wholly accurate, but it, it's pretty good. And we've done it in other things. It works quite well. In terms of the overall MDT, we looked at the... the peripheral MDTs with which each of the surgeons was linked and, and, and the number of operations done on the patients who were fed from those local MDTs and the local MDT resection rates, which was easier to, to, to calculate, and then who, who sat on those MDTs there. There were issues about trying to match MDTs and who was there, and you, you know these issues as well as I do, and attempting to, to actually ascribe individual workload to individual surgeons and accuracy of the data, but there was a very good positive iteration between the audit leads in each centre and the, and the team that did this to sort this out. So we spent spreadsheets out to all the SCST audit leads there, and they edited the data. There were a number of centres where we'd recorded more than they'd done, and you'd got more than But we generally came down to a pretty agreed set of data. There were a handful of places where there was still a dispute. Uh, 
and then we, we, we liaised with the COP team. I think COCOP's quite a good acronym for bad crop and good COP. Anyway, it's called the COP team. I'm, I'm actually on the COP advisory board, so we, we get back all these reports. And uh, so you hear, and then, um, then we put these, uh, these results via your, via your own website and, and NHS choices. And it's just a small issue is that we don't have strict control over how NHS choices portray these figures. We did have quite a lot of input, but there was, a, there was an opportunity for them to present these results in a very inappropriate way, and I think we blocked that. But there is a risk of these people who are very good at making it websites and screens, but don't understand what the data means, so there's a slight risk there. Problems, um, I think keeping everybody in control. We had some problems with the linkage. Uh, a big thanks to the large majority of thoracic audit leads, really helpful. Um, the main issue is we don't, A, we, we, we did not risk adjust, but we don't know how to risk adjust really, really very well as yet. Good, I think the lung cancer audit was very heavily involved. We att attempted to look at team based outcomes. We were happy with providing 30 day and 19 over society by a big unit, and I've said about the audit leads there. In 2015, we're going to be taking data from 2013. We again were told in um, February, March time, Bruce said to us, through Ben, we had to produce individual surgeon mortality rates for 2015 report. We argued we did not yet have a risk adjusting model, so he backed off again, so we've stalled that. And there, hasn't been, there isn't going to be any change in the basic indicators from last year to this year. We're not going to include risk adjustment. We've got some problems of data access because of the shift of the, of the National Lung Cancer Audit contract out of the Information Centre into the RCP, Royal College of Physicians, and we probably aren't going to be able to produce the report by the end of September, which is when we are asked to do. So it may be end of 15, very early 16. But, and the other thing is for this year, is each of you is involved has the ability to add your own personal background onto the onto the website. So this is Ben's bit, and if you spend some time looking on Ben's the website, it's rather large. All he's achieved, all his lectures. You know, he's a bit of a. Well, I won't say anything. But there's but there's a lot on there, and you have the potential to to, to to really say how wonderful you are, what you can do, what services you provide. You can talk about what you've done, where you've trained, and you can, you can even put your own patient experience data from your... There's, there's all sorts of things. You can put whatever you like on this. Uh, well, not, not whatever, probably, but the, anyway, there, there, are, there is the option to advertise your, your expertise and experience, and this is, this is the Liverpool, so you'll be able to show what your section, who does what operations in your own centre. So there's, there is the interactive option for you to describe what you and your unit does in a way that is... is is open. The lack of situation from 16 onwards is that they'll be taking data from 14. There's potential problems about the, the, the shift of the, of, the, of, the, of the contract from the HSC. I see you have, who have behaved ab abominably, abominably over this transfer. They have been incooperative to a large extent, which is partly why people can't get access to some of the data. But, so the, the RCP has rather been dumped with all sorts of issues, and I don't know how good the 2014 data are going to be. Um, I'll come back to how we try and pick that up. We have been told that we have to produce, in 2016, individual surgery and 13 diet, and that we're going to try and form some sort of risk adjustment. So we're working with the epidemiology group in, in Nottingham to see if we can find a way of building this in. The other indicators will, alter, will not change, except they're asking us to think about other possible MDT indicators. So we might be able to, for example, build in the RT, the, 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 the uh, radical uh, radiotherapy rate. There are other indicators which I haven't got time to talk about. But we might be adding in some other broader MDT indicators in there. But I think eventually we've, we've set this off. We, we've put this back. We've said... We don't want to do individual, it's going to come, I think, eventually. We've tried. You've seen these data before, just a, f a flavour of what the, t the 2012 reported in 2014 data were. This is the individual n n n numbers of procedures by different department, by different unit. 
This is the number of operations per surgeon per year in that year, flagged as whether they're pure thoracic or cardio thoracic. And as you'd expect, the, the large majority of the smaller volume ones are, are doing a mixed, a mixed number of operations. But it does concern me as a, as a physician that we've got 34 surgeons doing 10 or less operations per year. Now, I'm not the one to say what the quality of those surgeries is, but I just, as a profession, somebody needs to think about that, and I, I'm not going to comment on it except just to state it as it is. Um, the resection rate by, by unit, again, almost well, over twice difference. So you've still got some units where the resection rate seems to be poor. Um, incidentally, if you would be able to put... Uh, uh, um, Wales on there, we talked briefly about Wales, that would be down the bottom end as well. So there's an issue there. Um, Scotland, I can't comment on at the moment. And then this is whether the unit is predominantly thoracic or cardio. I'm not quite sure how they split the unit, but there are some units where are purely cardiothoracic. Is that not correct? I don't know. Anyway, but that, that, that's a slide I can't really interpret. However, there weren't any real outliers in, in the adverse effects. This is the two and, uh, and three standard deviation confidence limits. And one of the big problems of these things is, that it, is the numbers are so small, even by, by, by unit, the, 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 the confidence intervals will always be enormous. So we've done it, we looked at the effect in bowel cancer, where the, where, the, where the number of procedures per year is larger. And we reckon if you wanted to detect a surgeon who had twice the perioperative mortality of the average, statistically, you'd have to collect data for nine years to be able to statistically show a, a twice mortality outlier, statistically. By that time, the surgeon's changed, practice has changed. So these, these methods are very crude in terms of how they can... But you need to be thinking, you know, if you, if you get sh sh shown the... You need to be going back, in, back and look at your practice. So it's a, it's a reflective practice aid, I think, as opposed to a statistical... So they, I think they are helpful, but they don't answer the, the question. So we're full of acronyms. I, acronyms, I spend my life using acronyms. Um, HQIP is Healthcare Quality Improvement Partnership, which is the one which was set up to, to, to oversee a national clinical audit, funded by what well, the Department of Health, not NHS England, and the man behind that is Bruce, so it comes from his department directly down there. Um, that's this, for the COP programme, it's got an advisory board chaired by Ben, I'm on that, the, the, the president of the RCS is on it, Royal College of Surgeons, some MDs from Trust, various people are on that board. I have to say, the board doesn't really have the, seem to have the power. It's just there to, to, to reflect, advise, steer, pick up problems. The actual real drive comes from him and the people at HQIP. So we, we just have to try and pick up the pieces on that board. <laughs> Sometimes you get, you've then got the SETS with its own audit, which is what we've seen, and your own professional database. I was very sad that the two things developed independently, I'd like to see them linked personally. Um, you've then got the National Lung Cancer Audit, which is now part of the RCP, and that feeds data back into the NCRS, and the NCRM, which analyzes all the data, interprets it and, and reports it, and that now sits in Public Health England. So it's a bit of a pig's ear in terms of how you affect change and who's got access to what data and who allows things. You can imagine trying to get from there to there is actually quite complicated. So that's, it, it, you need to be aware of what buttons to press in order to get what you want out of this. That's, it's more complex than that. The, the lung cancer audit, as I said, was, was run in terms of its management by the Health Search Care for Information Centre until the end of last year. I stood down as of the beginning of this year as the overall clinical lead. Ian Wallhouse is a respiratory physician in Birmingham, is now the lead. I'm on the group still, but he's, he's younger than me, a lot younger than me. He's very enthusiastic, he's a fantastic guy. He will, I'm so happy to have somebody I feel can take this on. He's a good guy, and he's already brought a lot of things to the audit that weren't there before. We've been asked to align wherever possible to the... To, uh, 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 
the nice quality standards for lung cancer, to keep the burden of data collection down to a minimum, to improve the feedback, so not an annual report, but much more frequent reports, to, where, to do more on, on case mix adjustment. We always have done case mix adjustment, but we could improve on that. To, to build whatever we get back into quality improvement, and then this is part of our now spec in the audit is to feed into this program. I'm okay for a minute, two more. Um, so what we've set up is a brand new partnership, and you'll see, although the, the leadership project manager is now based in the RCP and has a reference group, our intimate information partners are the NCOS. So whatever we do will be plugged directly into the National Cancer Registration System, which I'll talk about briefly just to show you what extra resource that builds. The people at Nottingham University have got gradually more involved in our work, and they have got a superb epidemiolog epidemiological background, so they are academic um, statistical partners for the core work. It doesn't stop other people applying, although at the moment data access, as Eric knows, only too well, is not easy. But that's not our thought, and we, we do not intend to block, block access to these data. This is not a unique partnership. This is the one that's built into the routine reporting. And we've got the... A patient for focus led by the by the by by, by a lot of, uh, castle and the National Cancer Forum Nurses and Society. And this is an old slide which I realised I've put the wrong one because it hasn't got the uh, it hasn't got the <laughs> BTOG on there. So we have oncological input from 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 BTOG as well. So this is a much bigger, broader partnership than we've... We've always been a multidisciplinary group, but we've done our best to improve this. This is now, now how the NCRS works, the National Council Registration Service England. We attempt to collect data right the way across the pathway. So in the old days, council registries produced data on incidence, mortality and survival, and they produced it two to four years after the event. So it wasn't terribly helpful to people like us in terms of trying to affect changed in form or practice. So we completely reversed this. I think the audits have influenced what, how this has happened because they've been able to sh show what they can do. So we collect some primary care stuff from, from the CPRD, uh, cancer waiting times, screening data, imaging from the uh, imaging data set, which is fairly simple, but it tells you what imaging modality they've had, who's referred them, when they had it. The audits feed directly into there, so you can actually apply to the NCRS for these data, which is linked to all these other things here. Um, MDT data coming st stage, performance st st data, things like that. HES data, which we're now pulling directly from hospitals via the PAS systems, patient registration systems, so we don't have to go back to the IC. The information centre takes PAS data, compiles it, and sends it back to us. We don't like that. We take it ourselves. So we have all the OPSC, OPCS4 codes, the surgery, length of stay, comorbidities, etc. there. Uh, we've got data from chemotherapy and radiotherapy, which are not really sufficiently mature yet to build into the, into the linked system we will have before very long. National Cancer Patient Experience Survey is directly linked. We have problems in bowel cancer and prostate. We put in a bid to get a prom in lung cancer, particularly in resected lung cancer. That was turned down. We're attempting to get some funds from elsewhere. So we want to build a prom outcome because, as you saw earlier, the, the resection rate has increased in the elderly particularly. So I think, I think prom has become a very important issue in this. And then we get cancer deaths from the ONS and we have some palliative care data pauses. And this all comes in to our big system Encore, the English National Cancer Online Registration Environment, big black box with very skilled 215 staff in eight offices around England, quality assure, link, check these data, and then it gets sent on to the NCAN for our bank of analysts to work on it. So there's huge potential here. We want to start monthly data submissions. COSDI is the new cancer outcome services data set, which is basically an audit data set for all cancers, not just lung. So all but two items in the COSD in lung were in the previous audit. We're doing EGFR and smoking status now, which weren't there before. We've got the National Cancer Registry Service has got leads in every trust to try and help the data flows. We're going to be feeding back reports on a 
quarterly level, better handling of outliers and risk adjustment. And hopefully from next year, we're going to do a handful of spotlight audits. So the first audit we want to do is the reasons why people with early stage... <laughs> non-small cell lung cancer are not having curative treatment. So we'll be doing these snapshot audits where you'll be asked to collect a larger data set for a, a shorter period, and then we'll, we'll pull that. And we're setting different standards. So I'd like to say that we've got really, really excellent collaboration now, particularly for the future with the NLCS and the SCTS. We've got the potential for access to a much broader range of data which will help to understand the whole MDT issues that we touched on earlier. I think overall, and I'm interested to hear your feedback, the, the first run went as well as we might have expected. Um, I don't know that uh, there were any unintentional consequences. Again, I'd be interested to know your feedback. And I, we've managed to at least set back the, the publication of individual outcomes for at least another year. But We'll, we'll, we'll do it again. We'll, we'll do what we can to do, stop that next year. But whether we'll succeed, I don't know. So I'd be interested to know how the COP felt for you. Thanks very much. <laughs>